Welcome to the Wooting 60 HE review. This is the single best gaming keyboard I have ever tried to date. It's probably the best on the market as everyone says, and that's all you need to know for this review. So if you came and you're like, oh, I don't want to watch a however long video this is, 15, 20 minutes, you can go now. Order one, and you can leave, right? And just wait however long you have to wait for them to come. But that's the end of it all. That's the end of the review. Like, you can leave. It's fine. You don't need to watch the rest of it, right? I'm, I'm sure I'm not the first person to say that. And I am now confirming, from my point of view at least, that most of what everyone says online is true. I have only ever used full size and eventually TKL keyboards my whole life. Uh, I've been on TKL for the past probably four or five years. So I never decided to buy a Wu Ting because I'm like, hey, they only make full size, but I need all that desk space. Otherwise, 60%, but I'm like, oh, but my FN keys, my delete, my print screen, whatever. So that's why I never bought one. And I was like, oh yeah, 60% is unusable. I can't, I can't imagine using that. But heaps of people that come to this channel, you guys watching right now, love you guys for the support. And also to other people that I know in the local community that play games. Everyone's asking me, hey, can you review the Wooting 60 HE? Or, oh, you've got to try one, you know, like we have one. It's great. You got to try one. We, got, we need to know your thoughts. And I'm like, all right, fine. It's a keyboard how much of a difference can it make? You know, I've tried so many gaming keyboards on the market, and my most recent one that I was maining was the Razer Huntsman V2 TKL that had the Razer optical switches, and that really did perform pretty good. Not as good as the Apex Pro did, but when I went through all of those, they played well. I could notice some differences, but at the end of the day, it's a keyboard. So I was like, yeah, all right, maybe I'll try one. So I made a post, and I'm like, hey, anyone got one, they can loan me, or, um, you know, Wooting, is there any way, like, if I put an order on, can you guys, like, speed it up and I can get it faster or whatever? And then Wooting hits me in the DMs and they're like, oh, yeah, we'll just send you one. I'm like, what? Are you sure? They're like, yeah, we went through your application, we looked through your videos, you know, we know that even though you don't have the biggest numbers, your content was actually really good. So big shout out to Wooting, they actually watched our stuff and they said they liked the content, they liked the detail and whatever. So that's a good sign for me and I'm very happy for that. And so they're like, yep, we're happy to send you one, even though you don't have those numbers, because we don't just look at numbers, we look at quality of the content. And I was like, yeah! So, big shout out to Wooting, huge shout out to Wooting, and if you guys don't have a Wooting keyboard, you need to get one just because they're so nice. Comes in this Wooting black box, as you all know it. Now it's a 60% keyboard, analog they call it, and it will cost you 175 US dollars or 260 Australian dollars. The switches are Wooting's custom own unique Lekker switches, we will talk about later. And the main features are Hall Effect, Tachyon Mode, Rapid Trigger, Double Movement, whatever you want to call it. It's got RGBs, as per usual. And in the box, it will come with two extra switches, a keycap puller, and the cable. Also, there is the uh, Wooting keyboard strap, the signature iconic look. So. I've taken all my keycaps off, which is why they're a mess like this, but as you can see, that's what it will look like. Also, it has very good software. We'll talk more about that later. And unfortunately, there is still a super long production time. They were hoping to make mass production soon, but I think something happened and that wasn't going to be as promised anymore. It's going to be delayed. I had a look now. If you order today, as I'm making this video on the 12th of March in Australia, it will be around mid-May. You guys look at this right now, you're like, that doesn't really look like a Wooting 60 HE to me. Well, you're not wrong, because I've changed the keycaps and I've changed the case. So I've never previously built a custom keyboard for numerous reasons. Now, firstly, where I used to live back in New Zealand, it was really hard to access parts for custom keyboards. So it never really crossed my mind. You can't get things here, you have to buy them overseas, importing this, that, it's such a pain. I just couldn't be bothered, especially with the custom keyboard community and how long things are, group buys this, that, you just really can't be bothered. Second of all, I was mostly gaming focused and custom keyboards aren't really designed with the intention of being a top gaming performer. They'll support 1000 Hz stable, like, you know, the generic stuff. It's just a normal keyboard, switches, whatever, those make the differences. But when you have things like the Apex Pro, the Razer Opticals and the 8K Hz polling, even if it's not as noticeable, that is still an advantage and those definitely did perform better in games. So I never really got into that. You can disagree with me in saying that the custom keyboards don't perform too well in games, but that's something that I personally believed. However, Wooting 60 HE changes that. Because not only is this the best performing gaming keyboard on the market, just as the gaming keyboard, you can also mod it! It's never been seen before in gaming keyboards. It's just a no-brainer to me. So I was like, alright, this is the best playing keyboard I have ever tried, I'm gonna pimp it out. The Wooting 60 HE is a tray mount keyboard, so that means you can take the whole thing out and just put it into another case. All it takes is 
unscrewing five screws and you can take the tray out, stem it into another one. Make sure you do check the compatibility list to see which uh, cases work with that. This one I have now is a Mechanisk Fjell, which is supposedly the most premium case you can buy that's compatible based on the compatibility list. Note that inside the Wooting itself, it has a piece of foam that comes stock with. Unfortunately, this piece of foam does not fit into the fell, so mine does not have foam, nor is my switches lubed. I cannot be bothered. Feel free to watch all the other YouTube videos. There's so many of them about modding this thing. I'm not the biggest person in terms of that, so you guys should watch other guides. You can use the Wooting switches on other keyboards. Just know that it doesn't have the same effect. It just becomes a normal switch that feels like the Wooting Leco switch because the PCB is what's important on this as well. Now, you can change the keycaps. Some say that you do need to flip the switches around for cherry profiles. I didn't actually do that, so and it still worked perfectly fine with the uh, GMK pink on navy, so I'm happy with all that. Also, coiled cables are not recommended because they add too much length to the overall travel distance, and that can mess with the performance of the keyboard. I think the limit was 8 foot long, which is roughly 2.4 meters, so ideally stick with the stock cable or get a custom straight cable that's maybe 6 foot, and then you shouldn't have any issues. So these are the Leco switches. These are Wooting's own custom design switches, and it features a magnet located within the switch itself. As you can see, it's kind of that reflective metal part. Aside from the switch, the PCB itself is also important, which is, I assume, where the sensor is installed to work in conjunction with the magnet. The PCB is what the switch is actually mounted into. Now, the switch is a linear switch. I personally prefer tactiles, but I'm used to linears now because my previous keyboard was a linear in the sense of the Razer Huntsman TKL that had the Razer opticals that they were newly patented stuff as well and was pretty good. So the string inside is a 65 CN to push down completely. So that is on the rather heavier side of things. I personally prefer heavier keys, so I found this like perfect. I was super happy about it. It was really easy to adjust, but normally with Cherry MXs are 50, the Razors were 40, so you might find this to be a bit heavier of a key press and you have to get used to that. Now, it feels even better to type on than any gaming keyboard I've had, including the ones that use Cherry MXs. And I can't tell you if that's just me preferring this heavier switch or if there's actually something about it, but I think the heavier keystroke does actually make a big difference to me. It makes me feel like tap, 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 spamming. Oh, I'll press the keys super hard. Obviously, after modding it, it is now even better. Now, here is the big part of what makes this keyboard perform so well. So we talked about the magnet in the Leica switch and the PCB having sensors. Now that comes to the things, we, they call it the analog hall effect, the rapid trigger and take your mode. So the magnet on the switch gets closer to the PCB sensor as it gets pressed down. As you can see, this thing comes out as you press down on it. The closer the magnet is to the sensor, the stronger the signal actually is which means that there's a wide variety of features that you can implement into the keyboard based on the signal strength from how close the magnet is to the sensor. Things like custom actuation points, because all they gotta do is, okay, when the signal is this strong, do this. When the signal is this strong, do that. So you can set the custom actuation point, which just changes based on how close the magnet is to the sensor and hence changing how strong the signal is. You can also do what they call double movement, which is imitating a joystick. If you guys have ever played console games using a controller or whatever, you know, you gently push the key, you walk, you press it down to the end, the character starts running. And that's the same thing with this, you know, based on if the signal strength is this strong, make it walk. If it goes this hard, make it run and do things like that. So it gives you a wide variety of things that they can do, including as soon as there's any signal, say the stock point is this. And as soon as there's even the slightest difference in terms of signal, the key can get pressed down and that's what makes things register so much faster. Now keep in mind, I have not tested any of the double movement features because the games I play don't really benefit from that. Also that involves retraining your entire muscle memory. Like imagine having to undo 10 years worth of, oh, I'm just gonna press the key to run, right? And now you're like, oh, if I press the key this, I'm walking, if I press the key like that, I'm running. Like it's just so much muscle memory to retrain and I haven't had the time to do that. The games I play don't benefit from that either. The custom actuation point is very busted. Right, the keys are so fast, you just gently tap on it and it already registers. Like sometimes I don't even press on the key and it registers. Thankfully that hasn't happened in a bad way, but that's just to the extent of how it is. And that makes all movement and key presses just feel so much more effective. This is far superior to having keyboard latency reductions in terms of tech specs that companies start pushing out, you know, 8K Hertz, this, that. Because the human application of force transferred onto the key for it to then actuate is a lot more latency than the actual electronic devices would be. 
Now, combining that with rapid trigger, which is what they mean that you can instantly spam keys in the sense that as soon as the key lifts off, it is deregistered and you can register it again by pressing down. So what that is, is you press the key down, it's registered. And as soon as it loosens up, the signal is weakening. All they got to detect is that the signal weakens even the slightest amount and the key is released. It's no longer being pressed. Imagine how much difference that makes in games like Valorant when you just let go to make your character stop. Instead of waiting for the key to fully come up, the second it starts moving up on the switch, it's already stopped. Now, all of that just means that in games like Valorant and CSGO, when you're doing jiggle peeking, when you're doing counter strafing, oh my god, the movements are responsive, they're so stable, everything feels perfect. Jiggle peeking is unreal. Strafe stopping versus shot timing becomes perfect as well. Because now it's like, as soon as I press the opposite key, I'm no longer getting that accidental run and gun versus shot because I've pressed the key, but my character hasn't actually stopped. And if you go and watch my video about the aim training, I mentioned that when you're doing your warm-ups or your aim training, you want to try to time your shots and your movement perfectly. And this just makes that on crack, right? That's being on steroids in terms of that. It's just unreal. Then you have what they call take your mode, which just boosts the keyboard's uh, responsiveness and fully focuses on performance, but RGB lighting effects are kind of turned down. So in case you can't really tell, this keyboard does actually have RGB lighting effects. It's just that my keycaps don't really let it shine through. I think take your mode is the less noticeable feature when you have the custom activation point and the rapid trigger, but nonetheless, it's still definitely a difference maker and it just boosts performance. Note that it makes RGB effects turn off in the sense that you can only have one static unchanging light in the background. In games like Overwatch, playing characters like Genji or Tracer just feels so much more responsive. You know, whether that be doing your ghost dashing after you've gotten a kill, or you're spamming blinks on Tracer. Now, I'm not skilled enough at Apex Legends movement to tell you about that, but I can only imagine the effects are even bigger. Even in CS Surfing, movement might be a game changer. Though, I do think using scroll wheel to jump might be a superior option. League of Legends animation cancels, I imagine, would be insane too. And even more so for Osu players who need to spam keys and time their key presses against their mouse movements against the maps. And there's one game I can think of that this keyboard would have been absolutely cheating if it existed back when that game was alive. Guns of the Duel. This would have been everything. If you know, you know. If you know the game, you're a man of culture too. We'll move on to software, and I'll put some pictures here on the screen. The software is really good. The interface is clean, easy to use. You can do, even do it online without even downloading the software. So it's not even like a software. And that's a huge upgrade from generic device softwares to reduce how much background applications are on and things taking up your processing power. You know, some companies that have their software is literally the closest thing to a legal virus. <coughs> Razor Synapse, <coughs> Armory Crate. Uh, you get the idea. Like, like if you, like those things, my god, everyone tells you to delete those. Those things add so much latency and delay to your computer. It's actually unreal. And this nice, clean, easy, responsive setup, everything's self-explanatory. You just have a look, do what you got to do, and you can even uninstall it. You don't even need to install anything. Also, on the software, that's where you can set your per key actuation point, your rapid trigger, your take your mode, whatever. I forgot to mention, you can program each key individually to have different points of actuation. So that kind of ties into the potential issues you'll run into with the keyboard. And so we'll talk about that a bit more now. Users have reported that when they use take your mode, uh, kind of messes with their PC response and inputs. Um, I haven't experienced any of that, but just be aware that might exist. It's the same thing as people that used 4K polling or the Razer 8K polling saying it sometimes make the computer lag or whatever. I assume it might be either a software problem or your computer's processing power isn't powerful enough and it's a bit outdated. Now, actuation points that are too low, so I think the lowest was 0.1 mm. So when you have it at the lowest point, the keys might be too sensitive that you're not even trying to press down on them, but they accidentally register just because your hand's resting there. There is a way to counter that. It's just set all your keys to the lowest actuation point and then just play as you normally would. And if you keep finding yourself accidentally pressing on one key and it is registering, decrease that actuation point and make it harder to be pressed down until you get to a point where it's not happening anymore. Rapid trigger might also cause accidental multi-key registrations, even though you only pressed it once. So the thing is like, oh, I'm pressing the key once or I'm holding the key down. And for some reason, it's just, I tap the key once and it hits it 10 times. Now that has to do with an uneven application of force. Think about like when you're pressing down your shift key as you walk with your pinky finger, like I would, right? Are you constantly applying the same amount of force on this key the entire time? Or do you like accidentally like lift it even without realizing the tiniest bit of liftoff causes the key to deregister and then register again because you've then applied force again. So that inconsistency in your human error sometimes might create an issue with 
rapid trigger in play. So that's another thing for you to test. If you are encountering those issues, you know, change the actuations, change the rapid trigger until those issues stop occurring and you'll be good. Now that is also the big benefit of having individual keys because now you can program each individual key to suit what you need better. For those coming from 80% keyboards and you're like, oh, you don't want full size because you need desk space, which is what I said, but you also don't want to use 60% because you're like, I miss my FN keys. I miss my print screen delete. How can I press F5 ASAP to like surrender my Valorant games and go next? Or like, how can I screenshot and post on Twitter and say, look at this dumb cunt on my team. He's losing me the game. Why is he five and 16 in my rank games? then, well, you'll be happy to know that you can work around it. Sure, I can't spam F5 to uh, surrender and FF and go next as fast as I used to be able to, but at least now I can press FN and do the same thing by pressing F5. So if you press the FN key and you press the numpad, it just works like a normal function key. If you press FN and backspace, that's the equivalent of pressing the delete key. And there's always the other features that you can do. So it's a bit more complicated to work around. You just got to start learning how to use those individual functions. But once you get used to it, it's actually not that bad. And lastly, the only other negative I can think about is, my god, the wait time is definitely pretty crazy for this keyboard. As to be expected with how good of a product this is, but nonetheless, I know we would all like something a bit quicker to come. Lastly to mention, the Wooting Discord provides an insane amount of community support, right? The community in there is so active, it's actually unreal, including the staff. The staff is there checking the chat every single day and replying to all the messages. So if you have any questions, you can get them all answered there. If you have any issues, you can literally make a post in the Discord and someone will come help you, right? So the support behind the whole thing is unreal. And so it's almost impossible to run into issues that you can't actually solve. Given how nice Wooting already is, if you have any problems, I guarantee you their warranty is going to cover you perfectly fine. So in summary, this is the best gaming keyboard on the market just for performance as a gaming keyboard by a mile, right? Nothing even comes close to competing. Now, whether or not that is going to translate into your gameplay is purely up to your skill level as a player. You know, if you give some random silver player this keyboard or you give a random silver player some random office keyboard, they're not going to hit their shots either way. So how much of a difference this will make to you is still subjective to your skill level, as with all other peripherals. You know, that's kind of the reason I even started doing this channel. I'm like, hey, I want to look for a mouse review. Why am I listening to 40 year old gold players telling me that this mouse is going to work? That doesn't matter what mouse they're using. They're not going to hit the shots. I, I can't trust that. But in my games, if I don't have that confidence, I can swing this corner and take that one tap because I can feel myself, right? I can feel the mouse. I can feel good. I'm going to die. So I need that confidence induction from my gear. I need the best thing. And that's why I started doing this. You guys need one of these. It's not only the best performing keyboard. It's not just that. It's also customizable. You can make that custom keyboard dream a reality. And the amount of support behind this thing is also unreal. I haven't seen many communities with better support than the Wooting. This keyboard's a no-brainer. If you don't have one, you need one. You need it. Right now, just go place your fucking order. All right? I'll see you in the next one.